Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're talking about this DeWalt 20 volt max brushless impact driver. As you can see, we've probably had this one for quite a bit. I can definitely tell you, put it through his paces, use it for quite a long time, all right? So, uh, we can go over this tool top to bottom, see how it stacks up against some of the other tools on the market. Stick with us. All right, y'all, so this right here is a DeWalt DCF887. It's a 20 volt max brushless impact driver. And for the longest time, it was DeWalt's flagship impact driver, which means, you know, one of their best of the best or whatnot. And they haven't really had too many reasons to update it. And they did kind of, I think, release the 888, which has the same impact driver with Tool Connect. And fairly recently, they released the 20 volt max atomic one, which is supposedly smaller and faster and more powerful. So we'll, we'll test that one in one of the later episodes. But for today, we're talking about this one right here. As you can see, I probably had this one probably the longest of pretty much most of the impact drivers um, and because I mean you can probably tell just look at how much usage this thing's gotten over the years um, main reason for that is mainly because the battery platform uh, the uh, one the battery platform I started with originally was a dual platform uh, so we've kept this one for quite a bit when the flexible came out we had the uh, uh, 12 inch miter saw and we <laughs> we still had a crown molding I hate doing crown molding um, but anyways, long story short, because of the battery platform we were in, this was one of the original uh, impact drivers we kept around and we kind of just used it for quite a bit. So anyways, as you can tell, kind of put it through his paces. Um, but uh, without too much further ado, let's get into the marketing hype and then we'll uh, take a better look at it. All right, so this is DeWalt's DCF 20 volt max XR brushless cordless three speed quarter inch impact driver. Well, wow, try saying that pretty fast, huh? Um, it's guaranteed tough, as you would expect from DeWalt. It has a brushless motor, standard DeWalt, uh, you know, compatible part of 20 volt uh, max system, which is really 18 volts, don't get fooled in the marketing. It has a maximum RPM speed of 3,250 on speed three. If you put it on speed one, it goes up to 1,000. Put it on speed two, it goes up to 2,800. It has a maximum impacts per minute IPM of 3,800 impacts per minute and it has a maximum torque delivered of 1,825. It is compatible with almost all of their flex volt batteries or all of their 20 volt max batteries. The flex volt batteries is a little bit uh, strange. Uh, we can, I can tell you a little bit about that. If you try to put the nine amp hours or the bigger ones on there, uh, the belt clip is, is not wide enough or doesn't stick out far enough in order for you to get it on smoothly, but you can get the nine amp hour on there. Um, it's just a little bit of a struggle. Anyways, uh, the DeWalt, uh, it, 887 um, impact driver uh, features pretty much all that stuff over all of the other uh, tools on the market. And it has uh, precision drive for on speed one for precision applications for added control. We're gonna drill into that for a little bit. Has a three LED light with a 20 second delay after trigger release, which means it stays on for about 20 lights. And it does have the three LED lights, uh, which illuminates a little bit better than just one LED light like a lot of impact drivers have. Um, has pretty much a one handed loading of a quarter inch hex chuck with easy grip sleeve. It has quick loading, but it's not have quick eject. It is compact, roughly about two millimeters shorter than the DCF887 or 886, two millimeters here we're talking about. Um, and you know, it's part of the DeWalt 20 volt uh, max system. So it has pretty much a standard DeWalt warranty. All right, so let's talk about these batteries here real quick before we get any further. So as I mentioned earlier, um, it's a little bit struggle to get this thing on mainly because I believe this impactor was properly released, I think uh, before maybe this flex bolt batteries came out. Anyways, long story short, this is a five amp hour battery right here. And as you can see, it slides on and off pretty simple and easy, right? So if you take this uh, nine amp hour flex volt battery, try to slide it on, you can tell right here is where it really slides on or the uh, belt clip rubs right up against here. And you would think, you know, you can't really fit it on. You just gotta put a little bit of force and it will kind of bend that, uh, what do you call it, uh, belt clip a little bit out. So it's not really designed, I guess, in order to do that. But if you did want to use a flex volt battery on there, you can. Uh, you can go ahead and get pretty much um, like larger belt clips or whatever off the side and just put that on there, it won't be a problem. But I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, most people are not gonna be wanting to use an impact driver this heavy with this battery on it, all right? So uh, this is obviously, if you're holding the tool, this is the left-hand part of the tool, not too much going on here, pretty much belt clip here. This belt clip is uh, reversible to this side. And yes, the, it doesn't matter which side you put the uh, belt clip on, it's gonna be having the same issue, okay? Um, 
on this side, like I said, all this black stuff here, rubber overmolding as you would expect. It's got rubber overmolding here, so it helps prevent off sliding um, and damage and non-marring and stuff like that. Also in on here, it came with a sticker. Uh, you could probably tell it used to be right here. I think it used to say uh, made in USA with global parts and materials or something like that. So pretty much it means this mostly assembled in the USA and mostly all the other stuff come from wherever they source other tools and parts from, right? But anyways, pretty standard DeWalt grip. Like I said, almost all the videos, if, if you're blindfolded and you held this tool, you know that this is pretty much a dual tool if you've used dual tools before. On the back side here, flat part here, it'll say brush this here just in case you didn't know it was brush this. Standard uh, clipping uh, system for like a lanyard or some kind of fall rest type system if you were using something like that. On here is pretty much the right side. The right side is almost exactly the same as left side, um, except, you know, it just got, you know, tells you that this is a DCF 887. This part right here, after a, you know, a good amount of usage, it looks like this is slowly starting to fall off. It's been doing this for probably a year, a couple years or so, but you know, haven't had too many issues with it. Um, some, I think some um, um, kits may include a bit holder here. Mine did not. Um, I don't really care because I don't really use that bit holder much there to begin with anyways, but you know, that's what's really going on there. So let's talk about this front here, okay? So this front right here has a three LED uh, system. And you know, the three LED system I've always preferred over the one LED or even two LED systems they've used to had right above the trigger or right here, mainly because this is exactly where the work item is and you don't have to worry about something being in the way. Like if you're working somewhere, usually sometimes there'll be like a wire or something covering it up right here. Or if you're just trying to, you know, get into somewhere and you know, for whatever reason, it's blocking the LED here, right? So this is always preferred, you know, but uh, to each their own. This is the preference thing. So let's talk about this collet here. Uh, this collet is a quick insert collet, meaning you just, you know, take one in, put it in, no problem, it'll stay in. You just pull it out. You can pull it out one hand, you just pull it, pull it out, no problem. Um, I have, um, as you can see, we've used it for quite a bit and through all the years of usage have not had an issue with this collet. Um, it holds the bit pretty well. It's never really caused issues. Nothing's really ever gotten stuck. Um, there's been maybe a couple of times we broke, uh, what do you call it, a uh, socket adapter in here, but you know, you just bang in a little bit, it'll come out no problem. Uh, so let's talk about the variable speed uh, trigger option in here. Uh, so it does have a nice variable speed trigger, uh, pretty standard as you know, you would expect in most of all tools. Right now it's on speed one, right? And speed two. And on speed three. So it does work pretty well. I mean, like most dual variable speed triggers do. Um, it will just go in here real fast, just in case you know, you wanted to see full throttle speed real quick. Right, two, no problem. And one, which is the precision drive mode. We'll talk about that in a little bit. No issue, okay? So let's talk about this precision drive uh, for a little bit, mainly because it is a little bit interesting and varies a little bit uh, from other impact drivers uh, you may see on the market. So the way that this precision drive uh, mode works is after um, it comes to a point where there's enough resistance where you would expect hammering action, it takes a quick pause and then it decides to start hammering. Let me demonstrate for you. All right, so this is right here, a spec screw. You know, this DeWalt DCF 887, we're gonna put this on mode one and we'll show you precision drive. Just watch the trigger pull here and then just look at the delay before it starts triggering. Check this out, here we go. Did you see that right there? It took a few, like a second or so before, you know, give you a pause and then let you start hammering that away. A lot of people probably don't care for that. Um, I do actually find that generally pretty useful. If you're working on certain things, you know, sometimes the self-tapping mode, which is gonna be comparable on some other tools, you go full speed and as soon as you expect some resistance or see some resistance, it stops. But there's, sometimes there's just enough delay between it stopping that you've already stripped it, right? So um, this precision mode, you know, at first it does take a little bit of getting used to, but I do find that it does work pretty well, okay?
Let's go take a look at the numbers. So we ran this DCF887 with the five amp hour battery pack and on the eight inch Timberlock test. First run 4.55, second run 4.42, third run 4.60. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 4.52 seconds, all right? Uh, moving on to the medium duty lag test, which is really uh, 5, 6, 10, 5 sixteenths by 6 inch lag test. First run uh, 4.35 seconds, second run 4.12, third run 4.28. Taking an average of the three runs comes in at 4.25 seconds, okay? Moving on to the half inch by eight inch lag uh, test, the heavy duty, lesser movable object test. First run, 25.07, second run, 20.65, uh, third run, 19.48. Taking an average of the three runs comes in at 20.73, okay? And uh, this tool with the five amp hour battery weighs in at a whopping three pounds, 7.1 ounces, okay? Um, so the total performance score of this tool and this uh, battery combination comes in at 30.51 seconds, okay? Where does that put that? That puts that right in one, two, three, fourth place, uh, right behind the uh, Milwaukee 2853 right, which had a 26.06, .06, and now this has 30.51 seconds, okay? Um, we'll drill into the numbers, uh, more into the numbers in just a little bit. So, you know, some people like are mostly gonna wonder, how does the tool perform if you put a bigger battery pack on there? So we use the nine amp hour flex volt pack and put it with the 887. So let's go take a look at those numbers. First run on the eight inch timber lock test, 3.88. Second run, 3.83. Third run, 3.65. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 3.79 seconds, okay? Uh, so that is faster than with the five amp hour battery. Just wanted to point that out. With the five sixteenths inch by six inch lag test, first run 3.67, second run 3.67, third run 3.60. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 3.65 as you would expect. So um, just because it, it was too close or the numbers were just too consistent, I did run um, the uh, time uh, stopwatch check again twice to make sure we didn't use the same clip. And yes, that is verified, did double check it, and the numbers did come out to that, okay? So that's actually a lot of consistency on that part. Uh, moving on to the half inch by eight inch lag test. Uh, first run 23.78, 23 second run 17.98, third run 16.88. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 19.58. Five seconds, okay? Move uh, this uh, 887 kitted with the nine amp hour flex volt battery comes in at a, or weighs in at a whopping five pounds, 4.6 ounces. That is a heavy combination for an impact driver, okay? The total performance score of this and the flex volt uh, battery comes in at 26.98. So that puts this and the flex volt battery combination in fourth place just beating out the five amp hour battery, right? So uh, both of them still come in just behind the Milwaukee 2853 with a three amp hour high output battery, all right? Just wanted to point that out. So let's go take a look at the numbers um, before we, you know, try to figure out what's going on here. So um, if you look at it on the eight inch timber lock test, um, with the flex volt battery, it was 3.79 average. With the 5 amp hour battery, it was 4.52 average, okay? Um, there's, you know, probably close to, you know, maybe around a second or so in terms of difference. But if you look at it, it's not really that much of a difference. Even if you compare it to the Milwaukee 2853, averages between you know 3.99 which is around four seconds to like low threes right 3.33 you're not seeing a huge difference moving on to a medium test right the five six inch by six inch lag test you know it starts to get a little bit more different there but it's generally the same so you know uh, 3.65 average with the nine amp hour and the uh, 4.25 with the five amp hour right so if you look at the 2853 averages it was around you know 4.32 with a 50XC and you know uh, 4.92 with a 3 amp hour high output, right? You know, so it's still doing okay, right? Then we move on to the immovable, you know, object or whatnot. Let's talk about the half inch by eight inch lag. That's a really heavy duty test there. So that's where it really starts to make the difference, okay? So if you look at the three amp hour high output 2853, it had a, an average of, you know, um, 17.15 seconds. Whereas this 887 with the five amp hour battery had an average of 21.73 seconds, okay? Or if you move on, 
on to the flex volt, you know, we're talking about 19.55 versus the Milwaukee Gen 3 Fuel uh, 2853 with a 12 amp hour battery, which had an average of 11.85, right? So that is, you know, pretty much a big, pre pretty big difference there, pretty substantial. So why is that? Okay, let's take a look at it. If you look at the peak power specs, the 2853 Milwaukee Gen 3 Fuel has an RPM at our peak of around 3600 with an IPM peak of 4300 with a maximum torque delivered of 2000. This 887 has a uh, peak RPM of 3200, which is a lot less, uh, IPM of 3800 versus you know 4300 still a little bit less, and a peak torque delivered of 1825 versus 2000, right? So it's a little bit less. So because of those specs, you would expect it to come in, you know, right behind the 2853, which it did. So, you know, it pretty much measures out, right? But what can we take away from this video? What we can take away is if you're doing light duty, medium duty tests, or, you know, workload applications, it really doesn't matter um, which impact driver you're really using. You can even throw the Makita XET14 in there. We're talking about maybe sub one second difference or maybe even one or two second difference. You know, a lot of it's gonna really be based on, you know, what you're really doing and how that really matters. Whereas, you know, not a lot of people, or at least most people in their right minds, are not gonna be using impact drivers to drive in, you know, half inch by eight inch lag bolts. They'll probably either pre-drill or use an impact grant. So it really doesn't matter which impact you're using, just use one that, you know, works pretty well that you generally like using. The trigger response is good, as we did note. Um, that's what we can really say. So what else can we say? You can say, I can definitely tell you, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid us to do this. Uh, we bought this tool with their own monies for a long time ago and, you know, use it pretty much since. Um, what else is going on? You know, like I said, it's in a DeWalt system. So it's got the standard DeWalt warranty, works with all the other 20 volt stuff. And uh, the trigger response, like I said, already is good and it does work pretty well. Have we dropped it a couple of times? Sure. Does it still work? Sure, um, but you know, just make sure you're using the right tool for the application. But you know, if you're just debating, since you have this impact driver and you wanna go you know, run off and get the other one, is that really gonna matter to you? I don't know, if you wanna buy tools based on the numbers and like, you know, one or two second performance differences, sure, go for it. But the general takeaway is, it really doesn't matter which tool you use, just use one that, you know, helps you do good work that you like doing, depending on your application and a battery platform that you like or use pretty often. So. That's all we can really say. Hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, hopefully those numbers and stuff like that, um, you know, show you some more additional details and whatnot. But stay tuned as we take additional tools and put them on the chart and try to figure out how they really stack up against all the other impact drivers on the market. This tool, you know, I'm not really sure how much performance a tool is gonna lose over time. As you can tell, we've used this for quite a bit with a lot of usage, has a lot of wear and tear on it. I wonder how much it really stacks up if we were to buy a new one and see how that works. You know, that may be a test for a later video one day if we have to think about that. So without too much further ado, that's what we got. Stay tuned for the testing clips if you care about that. If you don't, then uh, have a great day, do some good work, and see you guys next time.